Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the all-new ASRock Jupiter X300, also known as the Dash in some parts of the world. Now, what this is, is a super small form factor, bare-bones Ryzen APU mini PC, and this will support up to the Ryzen 4750G, so you can get up to 8 cores, 16 threads, running at 4.4 gigahertz in this little unit. Now, as you can see, this thing is super tiny, and like I mentioned, it comes as a bare-bones kit, so you will have to add your own RAM, storage, and CPU, or APU, because that's what we want to throw in here. This will support from the 2200G on up to the 4750G. Now, along with the Jupiter X300 itself, we also get a couple extra goodies in the box here. Obviously, we're going to get our user manual. We also have a driver DVD. A tri-directional VESA mount, and this thing is actually pretty huge here. It looks like a little rack mounting system. We also get a vertical stand, our Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antennas. And even though this system only supports 65 watt APUs, we get a 90 watt power supply because as we know, these can pull a lot more than 65 watts. Plus, we'll need a little extra juice for all the accessories we have plugged in. And finally, we have the cooler. Now, this is a specially designed cooler for the Jupiter X300. And to tell you the truth, I really do hope it cools the 4750G because that's what I'm going to be throwing inside of this unit. Eight cores, 16 threads running it up to 4.4 gigahertz. And this cooler is looking a bit small for an APU like that. But we do have a copper plate here and some really nice fins. So hopefully this does work out for that APU. As for I.O. on the Jupiter X300, on the front here we have two USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A ports, and we also have two USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-C ports. Moving around to the rear, we have an audio jack, full-size display, full-size HDMI, we also have VGA here, Gigabit Ethernet, two USB 2.0 ports, and two more USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports. Assembly on the X300 is pretty straightforward. You will need a CPU, you'll need some SODIMM RAM, and an M.2 drive. We can also add a 2.5 inch SSD if we want to. We do have enough room in this unit. And as for the parts used in this build, I'm going to go with a 500 gigabyte PNY 2.5 inch SSD. I also have a simple Kingston 256 gigabyte M.2 SSD. 16 gigabytes of SODIMM DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz. And the main attraction to this whole build, Ryzen 7 4750G. So I'm going to go ahead and place my M.2 drive in here. We have that free M.2 slot. This does have and comes with AX Wi-Fi, so we do have Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.0 on board. I'll also add that other 2.5 inch SSD over here in the bracket. But now it's time to place the CPU in here. And like I mentioned, I'm using the 4750G. 8 cores, 16 threads running it up to 4.4 GHz, and we have built-in Radeon 8 graphics at 2100 MHz. And obviously, we have to use the cooler that came with this unit because it's the only thing that's going to fit. Now, this does have a couple little heat transfer pads for the VRM on this board here. Need to go ahead and pull the protectors off the pads. And I'm going to be using the stock thermal paste that ASRock added from the factory. If it doesn't work out and I'm seeing super high temps, I might go back and add some really good paste. But I don't want to waste this. I mean, it's applied pretty nicely here. Now, there's actually two ways that this heatsink will fit in here, but there's only one correct orientation, and I need to make sure I have the correct orientation the first time I put this down. And really, I just need to make sure those pads line up with the VRM on the board itself, so I'm going to go ahead and go off camera just to triple check everything. So now that I have the CPU heatsink installed correctly, it's time to add the RAM. And like I mentioned, I'm using 16 gigabytes of Crucial SODEM running at 3200 megahertz. It's going to be running in dual channel, obviously. And the blower fan is going to go right on top of this RAM here. There are three little nubs here to hold everything in place. Really easy to do. I've also added that 2.5 inch SSD. Now I need to install Windows 10 Pro to the M.2 SSD that I installed. But as you can see, this thing is tiny. I mean, it is a thin little unit. And I really hope that the stock heatsink setup can handle this APU. Okay, so first things first, I just wanted to give you a quick overview of the BIOS changes I made with this unit here. Over in Overclock Tweaker, I've just gone down to the RAM itself, and I've taken this up to 3400. The RAM is set at 32 right out of the box, but I've gone up to 34, and with this crucial RAM, it does work out quite well. The next change I made 
was down here with the performance mode. So I've enabled this and I've also set the power adapter to 90 watts because that's what we have. There's a 65 watt, 90 and a 120. I only have a 90 watt adapter so that's what I'm going to be stuck on right now. And the last thing I did want to make a change with was the fan speed. So instead of silent, we're just going to go to standard, try to keep this thing cool. All right, so here we are. I got Windows 10 Pro installed. As you can see, we have that Ryzen 7 Pro 4750G with the built-in Radeon graphics. Eight cores, 16 threads in this tiny PC is pretty amazing. This will boost up to 4.4 gigahertz. We have that 16 gigabytes of DDR4, and I have overclocked it to 3400 megahertz in the built-in Radeon 8 graphics. Now, one thing I wanted to make sure of was these graphics were running at 2100 megahertz, which they should be. We'll go to graphics here, run a little test. And this, yep, there we go. So it jumped right up. The core clock on that GPU is at 2100 megahertz. So this will be running at full speed. So now that we have that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump right into some benchmarks. First up, Cinebench R23 with a total score of 11,917. Actually really impressed with this. We're underneath that Threadripper, but we're well above that i9-9880H. Next on the list, PC Mark 10 with a total score of 5,780. I was actually really surprised to see the chart at the very bottom saying that this is better than 70% of all other systems run. Moving over to some GPU benchmarks, here's 3D Mark Night Raid with a total score of 18,280. Firestrike came in at 4,294. And finally, Time Spy with a 1,678. Not bad at all for integrated graphics if you ask me. And as for everyday usability, you're not going to have an issue with this machine here. I mean, if you want to get some web browsing out of the way, we'll just head over to ASRock's website. Everything's super snappy. does have that Wi-Fi 6 built in, but I am connected over Ethernet right now. I mean, everything loads right up here. Let's just head over to motherboard. Something random. Got some images populated here. I mean, it works great. WebGL performance is phenomenal on this machine. Here we have the FPS up here. We're at 60, 500 fish. We'll go up to 1,000, 5,000, 10,000, 15, still at 60, 20,000. It dips down a little bit there, as you can see. And at 25,000, you'll see it kind of fall on its face. But overall, really great. Now it's time to move over to some gaming. First up, we have GTA 5 1080p normal high mix settings, and I was really impressed by this. I actually got an average of 73 FPS out of this one here. Not bad at all for the form factor. And if we take a look at that CPU temp, we actually averaged around 73 through all of my gaming tests. Now this is definitely not a silent machine. It is audible, and especially when it kicks up to around 75 degrees Celsius, that little blower fan does kick on a little higher, but it's definitely not as loud as some mid-range gaming laptops that I've tested, specifically the GTX 1650 variants. When it comes to Fortnite, I thought I'd get a little better out of it. I only averaged 63 FPS, 1080p, low settings with 100% resolution scale. Now you can get a bit more out of it if you wanted to drop that resolution down or even just the scale at 1080, but I wanted to keep it like this and see what it did. I thought we'd be in the mid 70s, but unfortunately we averaged 63. CSGO is just one of those games that's really well optimized. I got an average of 128 FPS, 1080p, high settings. Dirt 5 didn't do so well at 1080 and it really didn't do that well at 720p low settings. Got an average of 52 FPS out of this one, 720p low. Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, 1080p, low, medium mix. I did have to turn a couple things down because we had some dips into the 50s, but we're getting a steady 60 here. Yeah. 
Forza Horizon 4, 1080p, low, medium, mix, got an average of 64 out of this one. I've had really good luck on lower end machines with this game, especially dropping those settings on down, and if you wanted a bit more out of it, you can always just turn it all the way to low. Doom Eternal, 1600 by 900 low with resolution scale turned off, I got an average of 51 out of it. I was really hoping to get a constant 60 and in order to do that you will have to drop this down to 720. And the final game I tested here, Cyberpunk 2077, 720p, low, with resolution scale turned off, I got an average of 33 FPS. I was actually surprised to see it running like this, I know we're only at 720p low, but this is just a really hard game to run. So when it comes to power consumption, I like to test these mini PCs with a kilowatt meter plugged into the wall. So this is total system power consumption, and remember, I went into the BIOS and set this to 90 watts. It idles around 12 watts. While I was gaming at 1080p with games like GTA 5, it was around 71 watts, and the maximum that I could get this to pull from the wall was 93 watts. And remember, we only have that 90 watt power supply, and this is kind of give or take a few watts given that we're using a kilowatt meter. When it comes to CPU temps, it's a lot better than I thought it would be, given the small form factor of this device. At idle, 46 degrees. Gaming does jump up to around 73, and in my extreme test, I could max this thing out, most definitely. 92 degrees Celsius, and that's what it's set at the thermal throttle in the bio, so it's not going to go over that. But keep in mind, I mean, this is not a silent PC. It does make a little bit of noise, even while you're gaming. It's not horribly bad, but you can make this thing sound like a jet engine by going into the BIOS and setting the fan to full speed. I mean, this thing can get really, really loud. But even in my extreme test, when I hit that 92 degrees Celsius mark, that fan didn't kick up to 100%, and it really wasn't that bad. But if you're looking for an ultra-quiet PC, this is definitely not for you. It does make a little bit of noise. So yeah, I'm a big fan of the Jupiter X300. Form factor is great, performance is awesome with that 4750G. But when it comes down to it, ASRock also offers the Desk Mini. And if I had to choose between the two, I would personally go with the Desk Mini. Mainly because we do have more drive options. It'll actually take two M.2 SSDs and two 2.5 inch SSDs. It does come in with a bit bigger form factor, but we also have the option to add a different cooler to the Desk Mini. And we don't have that with the Jupiter X300. But if you need something ultra small like this, I think this is an awesome option. And keep in mind, this will work from the 2200G on up to the 4750G like you saw here. And in my opinion, an awesome little APU for this would be the 4650G. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. I personally think the Jupiter X300 does an amazing job here. Now, I've only tested it with that 4750G. And if you'd like to see even the 4350 running in this, just let me know in the comments below. I think it's a nice little sleek design, and when it comes to do-it-yourself, bare-bones desktop APU kits, this is definitely on the top of the list with the Desk Mini. But that's it for this one, and like always, thanks for watching.